this faith thing episode 130 faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen faith is trusting in god with all your heart faith is knowing that all things are possible with god that nothing is too difficult for god to do this faith thing can be easy when we have god on our side faith is the word of god Welcome back for another episode. I hope that everyone enjoyed their Thanksgiving yesterday. And I did a podcast yesterday on the state of gratitude. So yesterday I sat down in my house reflecting on the goodness of God. And I was consumed with very happy thoughts. Thoughts that brought on tears because of how good God is. You see friends, eight years ago, the devil dealt with me really well he had me in a bind a tight corner and for a while i thought he had me i didn't get it i didn't know what was going on i really couldn't understand anything i was lost dejected frustrated annoyed and everything you can imagine my health was deteriorating and so was my faith i had lost all types of hope and did not understand what life was really about then one day i sat down And I was wondering to myself, could this possibly be my life? Is this what God really intended for me? And then I remembered the book of Jeremiah promising me that before I was formed in my mother's womb, before I was even placed in my mother's womb, that God knew me and that he knew the plans that he had for my life. Those plans were good plans, ones that will give me an expected end. Nowhere in the book of Jeremiah did it tell me that God's plan for me was to die at a young age. That was not his plan and that was not his intention for me. So through my pain and through all of the hurt that I had been going through for almost six to seven months, I managed to overcome what I was feeling. I managed to overcome the depression and the loss of my faith and all of my hope. I started to regain my trust and my faith in God and eventually God healed me. I can honestly say that it has been the trying time, one of the most trying times of my life and it has also helped me to grow my faith in God. God is good, friends. God is so good to us. And so as I sat down on Thanksgiving Day yesterday thinking to myself, what exactly am I grateful for? I began to think of all the good things that God has done for me, how he has saved my life and how he has done so well for my entire family, my entire household. Friends, it takes one encounter with God to understand who God is. No one has to force me to God. No one has to force me to pray. No one has to force me to go to church. And so I began to wonder why, why is it that some people don't appreciate God? You know, there's a saying that you can only understand something if you have walked through those shoes, if you are actually in those shoes. And that saying is very true. It only takes one encounter, friends, to understand who God is. No one is going to force you. Once you understand who this God is, no one has to force you to give thanks to him. No one has to force you to praise his name. No one has to force you to wake up to pray. No one has to force you to evangelize. No one has to force you to read your Bible because you know that he is that good. There was a time where I didn't understand who God was. I didn't understand how he operated. But once I had that encounter, that personal encounter with God, nobody ever had to talk to me about God because he is my everything. He is the only one that has remained constant in my life. You never will understand God, friends, or even come close to knowing God. Unless you try him. That's why the book of Psalm 34 verse 8 says to us, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. It tells us, friends, that we should taste and see that our Lord is good. That is the only time that you will know who he is. Unless you have tasted of God, unless you've had a personal encounter with God, you cannot know who God is. And now I understand why some people, friends, Just don't get it. I really do understand why some people don't get it. Yesterday, as I sat down in my house to begin to reflect on the greatness and the goodness of God, this is what came to me. There's just no way for any human being to understand who God is unless they desire to taste who God is. Let's talk about it this way. 
Personally, my dietary lifestyle is of a vegan. I don't eat meat and I don't eat dairy products. So you can imagine the types of things I eat. I have a very strict and restricted diet. I have to find new foods to accommodate what I used to know as a meat eater, what I used to know as a dairy eater. But now I use an alternative option, a plant-based option. So recently, I have been desiring to eat cheese. And even when I was eating meat or dairy products, I did not eat cheese much. But there are certain dishes that you want to have cheese in, such as macaroni and cheese, which is not something that I eat much of. But recently, I've had a craving for it. So I've Been on a search to find an alternative vegan cheese. I've bought the store-bought ones, and I don't typically like them because they put too many ingredients in it. And I'm not someone who has that type of palate where uh, I want to have too many ingredients in the foods that I eat. So I rather a very simple one. So I began to find and try out new recipes to come up with something that will be similar to what I know as cheese. And so I found this recipe using tapioca flour, cashew nuts, and miso paste. Just three ingredients and some hot water that could possibly make this cheese. And I was very skeptical, friends, when I found this recipe online. I told myself, there's no way that this three ingredients will taste like cheese. And friends, when I decided to make it, of course, using the right proportions, using the right amounts, it came out wonderfully. And it actually tastes like cheese. I was quite shocked. And then I sat down and said to myself, well, that's true. God made everything for a reason. And just because what we know is cheese doesn't mean that he didn't make other things to make the same cheese. You see, our palates have been trained to know cheese for cheese, to know cheese the way we know it. But that doesn't mean that God did not create an alternative. That does not mean that God did not create a new way of making different foods in a healthy form. And thankfully, I have found it for my personal dietary needs. Friends, you see, when I now tell my sisters or tell my friends that I found a new cheese, I've made a new cheese that is a vegan based. It doesn't have any dairy products. They look at me sideways as in, what are you talking about? There's no way that what you're eating is cheese. They refuse to taste it. They refuse to try it out. I don't have a problem with you not wanting to eat it forever, but what you should try and do is to try it out. But you see, this is what happens in real life, friends, and this is exactly what happens with God. The Bible in Psalm 34 verse 8 tells us that we should come and taste and see that the Lord is good. But you know what? Some people don't even want to try it. They don't even want to come towards the Lord. They don't even want to come to his church. They don't even want to come and read the Bible. They don't want to go out to evangelize. And they don't even want you to evangelize to them. They don't want to taste and see that God is good. They refuse to try God. And this is what we see happening in the Christendom everywhere. Not only in America, but all over the world. They refuse to simply try it. Try God. Try him. And they refuse to know that in their heart that God can never fail them them or maybe it's that they're scared that they will be disappointed in themselves because God will never fail they have condemned God they say that there's no God they say that he's not good well friends if you say that there's no God I really don't want to be philosophical but let's just look at it this way in order for you to say that there's no God in order for you to say that he's not good, that means that you have some type of knowledge and you are acknowledging that he does exist for you trying to disprove his existence because you cannot disprove what is actually not there there's no reason for you to want to do that so for you to say that there's no god that means that in the back of your mind you believe that there is a god and you're trying to disprove him and unfortunately friends you can never disprove him because he does exist yes god wants you to be happy he wants you to have a beautiful life but you have to taste him you have to know that god is good You have to know that he is able to do everything. This is what was ministering to me yesterday, that God is so good. Even when I was sick and my faith had gone completely down, I sat down to think that this cannot be what God has designed for my life. God could not have possibly designed that I would die at a young age. At that point, I had not done anything with my life. I was still young in my early 20s. What could I have possibly done with my life? When someone is sick, Someone who wants healing and they gave them medication from the hospital. If you refuse to use the medication, can you possibly be healed? No, you cannot be. 
The Bible tells us that he bore all of our sicknesses and he has healed our disease. If I refuse to believe that, then there would have been a problem. Then the story may have gone the opposite way. But because I've internalized it, because I took it into my head and into my heart and, and I stood on his principles, I stood on his word, I stood on his promises, knowing that he could not lie to me because that is what Numbers twenty three nineteen tells me. He cannot lie. He's not a man that should lie. No two words in his holy book contradict themselves, friends. The only way that I could have received my healing at that moment was to believe that he was able. Was I sick? Yes, I was very sick. In fact, friends, I was in so much pain, so much pain that sometimes even to shower, I couldn't stand in the shower. I had to kneel to take a shower. That's to prove to you how sick I was. But I knew that God had a plan for me. He told me that in his book, he cannot lie, friends. He's good to us all the time. No matter what it is that you are currently going through, friends. No matter what it is, God is able to do everything. God's resume is immaculate, friends. When you look for a job, when you desire to get hired by a particular company, you, res- you, you will submit something called a CV or a resume. Some of us call it resume. Okay? And you send it to the company and the company, they will begin to review your resume and they, they're looking for a person who is well suited for that job, one who will do the job, one who will be an asset to the company, not a liability to the company, someone who will do great things to the company, move the company to a greater height. And friends, you should look at God's resume. Why not hire God? He's a good God. This is the God that opened up the womb of Sarah at the age of 90. This is the God that brought water out of a rock, friends. This is the God that separated the Red Sea and there was dry land for the children of Israel to walk through, friends. And then he closed it back, friends. This is the God that can heal any sickness. The one that can cast out demons, friends. The one that can raise the dead. There's nothing that God cannot do. Trust me, I'm living proof of it. Nothing. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ever think, ask, or imagine. This is the God that we serve. That is his resume. Why not examine the resume of God to know that truly this God, this God is so good. He wants a better life for me. He wants it to be well with me. That is why we need to be grateful. That is why we need to be appreciative because on a daily basis, he wakes us up. Friends, when we go to sleep, you don't have any control of what's going on around you. You don't know the wars that are being waged around you, on you, against you, against your family. You don't know what has passed outside. Some people's homes are on the edge of a street. You know how many cars have to pass through that house every single night? What makes your house so special that no car has ran through it? Oh, you don't think that it has happened? It has happened. Or what makes you think that you are safe? Or that God makes you to miss your flight. Or God makes you to miss the bus. Or God makes you to miss that traffic. Or not allow you to take that road. Not allow you to take that specific road to your job. Because God loves you. He wants the best for you. His resume is perfect, friends. His resume is perfect. As I sat there yesterday reflecting on life. It just dropped on my heart that this God that we serve. This God that we serve. His resume is awesome. There's no one who has a resume like God. No one, friends. No matter whatever you're going through, no matter what it is, no matter what you see, no matter what you feel, no matter what you hear, God's resume is perfect. And when you are looking for someone to complete the job, to make you happy, to fulfill your destiny, to take you to your location, to give you clarification, to help you with a new job, get that new job, get that new car, get that new home. If you're waiting for a spouse, waiting for children, if you are waiting for anything, if you desire anything, don't look to man. Man will fail you, friends. They will fail you. They will tell you to your face. They will do it. Behind your back, they won't do it. Don't put your confidence in man. Don't put your confidence in princes. Don't put your confidence in money because they will all fail you. But the one that can never fail you, 
the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Most High God, the All-Sufficient King, the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley, the Lion of the Tribe of Judah. He can never fail you. He can never fail you, friends. His resume is that good. Yes, will you have problems? Will you have trying times? Yes. Lots of times it's there to build your faith. It's there for you to make sure that you are planted solid in him, in his word. That when winds blow, you don't move, you don't budge. Because you know that you're serving a God whose resume is complete. When a job is looking for a candidate to fill their position, their open position, that that candidate may look so sweet, so awesome on paper. And they've hired this person and they now see that this person has flaws. They now see that this person, oh, truly, you, you really can't do this particular job that you said that you can do. But friends, when you hire God, when you hire him to complete the task, not only will he do what you asked him to do, what you begged him and you cried to him for, he will do it in such a way that you yourself, you will be so surprised that I don't even understand how God is able to do this for me. God has promised us, friends, that he loves us and that he wants it to be well with us. That is why we are to be grateful. That is why we are to serve him. Friends, whenever you're looking for anyone to complete anything for your life, the only person that you should hire is God. Friends, I hope that this message has blessed you. Go in peace and I will speak with you on the next one. Thank you for tuning in to This Faith Thing with Adil Aduni. Please head on over to the website at thisfaiththing.com to find the show notes and everything mentioned inside of this podcast. I pray that you have been blessed. Go in peace and I will see you in the next episode. God bless you.